With Ex Machina's increasing popularity, I thought I'd go back and look at what made this science fiction rather profound, and shed some insight and theory into the narrative. You are the dead center of the greatest scientific event in the history of man. If you've created a conscious machine, it's not the history of man. That's the history of gods. Set in the isolated mountain home of the CEO of a world-renowned search engine, a young programmer is invited to work on a disclosed experiment which would test if human robotic AI could really work. Firstly, at the forefront of any narrative sits the main conflict, which in this case traditionally would be man versus machine, but that's not necessarily the case here. When the young programmer Caleb first meets the eccentric creator Nathan, their interaction acts more like a psychoanalysis than a human conversation, with Nathan pointing out how scared and bewildered Caleb is to meet him. It establishes the conflict immediately, which essentially boils down to a battle of masculine wits. The goal of the experiment is to test human intelligence against artificial intelligence to see if man-made machines are foreseeable in society but at the heart of the experiment is Nathan and Caleb's personality clash. Both characters have different egotistical outputs. Nathan is arrogant and self-assured about his abilities and knowledge, whereas Caleb is far more reserved and desperately attempting to prove his own intellect. So while both characters' goal of the experiment is clear and sound, it's conflicted by their personal disagreements. Nathan's psychoanalysis of Caleb is later contradicted when Nathan encourages informal and relaxed conversation, rather than turn it into a seminar or employee-boss relationship. In this sense, Nathan is attempting to artificially construct a conversation, which isn't organic, so most of their dialogue is rather awkward and forced, but most of all, controlled, like a science experiment. Despite Nathan's desire to have a friendly time, what you'll find is that he persistently highlights his dominance. He directs the conversation, points out how he's Caleb's boss, restricts Caleb's hospitality, and generally undermines Caleb as a person. You're good with words, Caleb. You're quotable. Actually, that's someone else's quote. You know, I wrote down that other line you came up with. The one about how if I've invented a machine with consciousness, I'm not a man, I'm God. I don't think that's exactly what I just thought, I... fuck, man, that is so good when we get to tell the story, you know? I turned to Caleb, and he looked up at me and he said, you're not a man, you're a god. Yeah, but I, I didn't say that. So, in Nathan's mind, he's at the top of the food chain, and his constant reassurance of his intellect ensures that nobody attempts to overtake him. Caleb's ego, on the other hand, is influenced by his gradual disillusionment with Nathan. As a result, Caleb attempts to prove to Nathan that he's a great programmer and a valuable asset to both Nathan's company and wider society. He wants to be treated as an equal to Nathan considering both of them are just everyday men doing typical activities, but Nathan is obviously asserting his dominance far too frequently for Caleb to relax. But Caleb is a lot stronger character than many people give him credit for. Yes, he is entirely weighed down by Nathan's superiority, but it's the fact that Caleb persistently deflects Nathan's opinion of him and struggles to redirect the conversation which makes him a fighter. Something which does become clear is that Nathan is using Caleb's personal internet searches against him, such as his loneliness and pornography, thus giving Nathan an insight into Caleb's supposed masculine weaknesses. Considering that Nathan uses it against him most prominently in how Ava is created around Caleb's desires, it's no surprise when Caleb uses Nathan's weaknesses in retaliation. Nathan isn't as impenetrable as he makes himself out to be. It's not just the fact that he's an alcoholic, but also the fact that his boastful intelligence means that Caleb becomes aware that Nathan is probably watching him all the time, thus uses this knowledge to further outsmart Nathan. To put it another way, Nathan's intelligence is his true weakness. Remember this, Nathan's main pride is that he created an AI that can work out any micro-expression. In this regards, not only can Ava create any emotion she wants, but she can also tell how others are feeling, which means she can tell when other characters are being vulnerable or lying and exploit that against them. As a result, Nathan inadvertently pushed his own creative and intellectual ambitions too far, and created something more intelligent and creative than he is, which in essence would contradict Nathan's dominance. 
Regardless of the audience's assurance that Nathan is the villain, I kinda disagree, as both characters play an instrumental part to the film's conclusion. There is no archetypical villain because they create one. Eva. In most science fiction, usually the robot is the vulnerable character, who exposes how horrible the world really is, but here it's a lot more grounded and, dare I say, original. Both men are using their bravado instincts to assert male dominance, which Eva ultimately uses against them. She exploits Nathan's powers of manipulation and Caleb's quiet vulnerabilities. She uses Caleb's loneliness as a way to get him to take pity and free her from her cage, as she uses her empathy and sexuality. Once Caleb frees her from her cage, she uses Nathan's manipulation against him and causes a lockdown, trapping Caleb in her place which makes things seem a lot more tragic in this regards. For Nathan, on the other hand, the abusive overtones of how he treats his robots sees both Eva and Kilko take more drastic measures. It seems clear that Nathan is the dominant alpha male, but once Eva and Kilko are free, Nathan is suddenly no longer sheltered behind his barriers. His intellect is no longer of use, as Eva refuses to listen. And how does he respond? With violence, of course. His physical response further contradicts his attitude as he simply aims to get his way by force rather than intellectual manipulation. As a result, the robots respond with violence also. In summary, we have this. Nathan and Caleb are focused too much on bruising each other's egos, to one-up their own intelligence, with Nathan trying to prove himself as the dominant male and Caleb proving that he shouldn't be underestimated. The fact that Eva understands how both characters are behaving and can use it against them puts herself ahead of them both creatively and intellectually. In short, both men basically make Eva smarter and stronger. Overall, what we have is a character-driven study of isolated human interaction. Over time, people become conflicted with other personalities, and what breeds is natural hostility and personal clash. Ex Machina is less a story about AI and more about how people interact with each other and the level of influence and control that certain people aim to assert. And I'm afraid that's something I cannot allow to happen.